Good morning everybody, happy March. Uh, spring is finally here, officially. Uh, my name is Rich and it's my privilege this morning to go through Mark chapter 10 verses 13 to 31 with you. We're going to look at two different stories, Jesus' interactions with children and also with a rich young man. And we're going to start at the beginning by looking at how Jesus is very uh, tough in the way that he speaks to the disciples. The disciples are not uh, lovers of children, it would appear. They seem to think that children are secondary, that they're unimportant. Come on, kids, get out of the way so that Jesus can minister to the really important people. And even as a parent, I can find myself slipping into that kind of mentality. I can tend to think, like, so basically we have this one particular part of our weekends at least where we have quiet time in our house and quiet time is this wonderful 90 minute period sometimes 90 minute period where my youngest is asleep and my two elder children are um, in their bedroom playing on their own and there can be a temptation for me to think this is the epitome of the day this is the best bit it's where the kids don't bother me ever they're just being quiet in quiet time and uh, I'm half joking but in all seriousness I can easily slip into this mentality of thinking that life is about pursuing my career it's about improving my personal bests on Strava it's about getting through my um, book list for the year it's about enjoying watching Manchester United win sometimes and those things are good, but they're not the things, they're not the priority. Actually, children are very high up Jesus' list. And I don't want you to switch off at this point if you're not a parent, because this is true for you, even if you don't have your own children. Actually, Jesus really cares about children. He wants to point us towards being like them in a minute, as we'll see. And so if you're not a parent, I want you to think about... The fact that we're a church, we're a family together, and actually there are many people who are single or don't have their own children who do a lot of good to my kids in letting them know about Jesus. And that can be quite formal, it might be that when we reopen shortly, it might be that God wants you to get stuck in and serving in the children's work. That's not a secondary thing, it's not well the main stuff goes on in the meeting. No, actually the kids' work is vital to the life of a church, to our church. But also it might just be in your interactions just in a more casual way. God wants you to have a high view of the importance of children. Secondly, Jesus says, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them for the kingdom belongs to such as these. And that surely begs the question, how is it that we can hinder children and I think there are two ways, broadly speaking, I'm sure there are more. But one of them is legalism. Actually, Jesus says, let the little children come to me. He doesn't say, let them come to religion. He doesn't say, let's settle for behaviour modification. Let the children behave well. He doesn't say that. He says, let the children come to me. It's vital that as parents we have vibrant relationships with God ourselves and the same if you're not a parent little children are very observant they notice the sincerity of your faith is it just for show or is it genuine do you really love Jesus have you really got passion for him so we mustn't settle for legalism that can hinder children they'll see right through that might be that we sometimes just go through periods of indifference and sometimes I've battled this as well. Sometimes you just think, you, you know, we've been in lockdown for all this time, you just sometimes think, oh, just just go to bed or just let's just stick on Netflix or whatever it may be. And actually we just don't bother prioritising Jesus. And sometimes we can substitute it with other, you know, decent things. It might be that we want them to be good socially, we want them to be popular, we want them to be able to do well in education, we want them to, to learn to swim, 
plays sports, whatever it may be, and these are good things, then there's nothing wrong with them at all. But they can very easily take the place of Jesus. And so we mustn't hinder our children by not teaching them at all about him or by giving them the half-baked substitute of legalistic religion. Jesus wants us to let the children come to him. Thirdly, um, we, he doesn't, Jesus doesn't just say, let the children come to me. He also says, receive the kingdom like a little child. What does he mean by that? Well, he doesn't mean just believe in anything, because actually kids quite literally sometimes will believe in anything. Actually, no. He wants us to be trusting. The reason my kids actually believe what I have to say to them most of the time um, is because they know that I love them. They know that I have their best interests at heart, and so I tell them the truth. And so they trust me. And that's what Jesus is saying here. He's saying... Don't be hard-hearted, don't be cynical. It might be you're feeling like that, and actually this morning it might be you need to say to God, even now, God, I'm struggling to trust you in this situation. That's what he wants. He wants you to be honest. You have a father-child relationship with him where you can say anything, and it's not too much for him. But contrast that with the story of the rich young man. Now, if there was ever a parable about... A 21st century Westerner, surely it's this guy. He thinks he's very moral. He says, I've done it all, Jesus. I've, I've managed to keep the commandments. I'm good enough. I can impress you with my morality. And he's, he's got wealth. He thinks, I don't really need to trust God. I've got money. I, I can sort myself out. I've got my life in control. And Jesus says, don't be like him. Don't think you can impress me with your moral efforts. Don't think you've got everything sussed and under control. No, be like this child who trusts in me. Receive the gospel as a free gift of grace that you can't earn. That's what the rich young man's trying to do, isn't it? He's trying to earn, he's trying to prove his worth. We've got to put that aside and we can slip into this as Christians. We can think, well, if I get up in the morning, if I don't swear or if I read the Bible so many times or if I even if I pray then God will be impressed with me no it's a free gift of grace we must come to him every morning and receive him like a child trusting in him because he is good and my final point is Jesus wants to place his hands on you just like in this story, we see that Jesus wants to place his hands on the children and bless them. Do you know that this morning? God wants to bless you. He wants to give you good things. He wants to fill you with his Holy Spirit afresh. He wants to give you passion for him. He wants to give you love for other people. He wants to change your life by blessing you. Is that the God that you come to this morning? Is. This is the God who says that he is slow to anger and rich in love. This morning, can I encourage you, come to Jesus. Come to him as a child, trusting in him, knowing that he wants to bless you, that he wants to do you good, that he wants to have an impact in your life that is positive. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been encouraging and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.